singing a song along the way, making the most of every day. about the fairy dust pigments I gave you an overview of the whole collection you can see some of those pieces here and in this video I want to show you how easy and fun it is to make your own watercolor paint I'll cover what else you can make with them in another video this is about watercolor now there are 50 gorgeous colors in this collection and I've named them all after the real world fairies, the butterflies and moths. We're going to start with one of my favorite butterflies, the pink clear wing from South America. When you get your sachet of color out, just tap it gently on the table. That will get the pigment to flutter down to the bottom of the sachet so that when you open it, you don't lose any of that gorgeous pigment. I'm going to use my little treasure measure to measure out the pigment and the other ingredients. There's two ends, a three gram and a one gram end. I'm going to put the one gram end into that beautiful pink clear wing fairy dust. Take a little scoop full and place that into one of the color cauldrons. Now the fairy dust pigments won't stay on the page on their own. They need something to bind them to the paper. And we're going to use gum arabic. This is a water soluble natural gum that's produced by the acacia tree that grows in sub-Saharan Africa. Farmers place small cuts on the bark, gum forms and then is then harvested. It's sent all over the world in that natural state but it can also be powdered or made into a liquid. It has many health properties. You can actually eat gum arabic, but we're going to use it for its water soluble properties. This is what makes a watercolor a watercolor. I love using the powdered form of gum arabic because it's so easy to measure it. I usually add just a little bit less of the binder than I have of the pigment. This seems to work really well in keeping the shimmer on the page, having a lovely glossy watercolor, but you can play with that amount. And over time, you will probably work out your own personal preference. Optional ingredients are glycerin, honey, and oil of cloves. Now I add glycerin for re-wetting properties and you can find glycerin in the supermarket. It's non-toxic, sweet tasting and often used in cooking. Honey allows the watercolor to hold onto its moisture 
Be careful of adding too much though because your watercolor won't set it will stay very very soft but it is a lovely property to add and you can add a tiny amount of the oil of cloves again totally optional this has uh, anti-mold properties as well it just helps keep your watercolors preserved the last ingredient is going to be distilled water which means it's chemical free and it's been treated so that it has no contaminants and then we're just going to mix them together and finding the exact right mixing tools really was a wonderful adventure and I knew exactly what I needed and getting the spatulas made to my exact specifications for fairy dust pigments was a dream come true and they're wonderful one is a little bit more scoopy but it's got enough body so that you can mix with it and the blue one which I'm not using in this particular video is great for scraping paint but also for mixing and the color cauldrons come with their own pestles which you can use as well however the fairy dust pigments are already very finely ground and you don't need to grind these pigments we're just combining the different ingredients to make the watercolors you may have seen people making watercolor with a muller and glass slab and i have certainly made watercolor that way myself and if you're making watercolor on a commercial basis then yes okay glass muller and glass slab fabulous if you're just making watercolor for your personal use then it is a very messy way of making watercolor and that's exactly why I've created the tools the color cauldron the spatulas the treasure measures all of these different pieces because it just makes it so much cleaner and easier even the exact pigments that I've used in the collection mix beautifully that's part of the reason that they have been chosen so i mixed all my ingredients there and i'm scooping up my lovely creamy mixture and placing it into the fantastic palettes i don't want my mixture to be too runny if it's too runny i've added a little bit too much water and to come back from that you can add more pigment and more binder or you can just pour it as it is it will just dry very flat in the pan the color won't be flat it will still be shimmery shiny the pigment will be exactly the same it's just that it'll be physically a bit more compressed but it's just an aesthetic thing it will work exactly the same as a non-flat watercolor so it's not to be worried about too much that's why I'm talking about <laughs> these being fun and easy and I've got enough watercolor left over that I, so I can fill a smaller pan. And I've got one of my little art time pans here. I'm going to make a travel set of all of the fairy dust pigments as well. And to get that last little bit of the pigment out of there, I've just added a little bit more water. And I'm just working that around my color cauldron because I still do have plenty of pigment there. But this mixture is going to be very watery and you know what's really weird is the more watery this is when i pour it the harder it will dry but again like i said before when you go to use it it will work exactly the same all of the water will evaporate and you'll just end up with a more it's like a more intense watercolor so see how runny that is that little section there it will still dry into a lovely watercolor we've got the pigment we've got the binder life is good now we are looking at the watercolors the next day they've completely dried I've got my little clear wing she's the second from the end on that bottom row there and she's the one on the end of the top row up there beautiful beautiful muted pink watercolor and oh, I suppose I'm nearly about to say and now the fun starts but do you know what creating the watercolors swatching the watercolors I find just as much fun as creating art with them it's all part of the process it's all creative and it all involves color these are my favorite things I'm using one of my mermaid contour brushes this is the one that's got the mermaid tail they're in plastic and there's three different 
mermaid fins and each one has a different shape fin and you can use them to create texture one of them has a this beautiful round paintbrush tip and uh, I love it for watercolor absolutely love it for watercolor holds lots of pigment and water and I'm just picking up that lovely pigment just a little bit of water and it comes alive before I added water to it it felt hard to the touch as I add water to it it just the, the gum arabic dissolves remember the beautiful gum arabic the binder and that allows this transformation from a dry oh what well, somewhat beautiful but a dry pancake of color to a uh, a new creature that can flow and wash out across the page and let you create whatever is in your mind's eye i'm just watching myself paint this now and i just painted this I went down to my studio and I painted this because I wanted to show you how gorgeous these watercolors are once they dry and when you're ready to use them and I'm now watching this as I'm editing the video and oh, I love being an artist isn't that the best don't you just love painting I I don't know it's I can't even get the words out of just a little simple line just transforms blob into a feeling and this just brings me so much joy and I I so much want that feeling for everyone uh, I love 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 playing with color and I love painting faces drawing women it's just just my favorite thing to do is just what comes out every time I <laughs> touch my paintbrush or brush or whatever it is to paper uh, and to be able to play with colors that I've created with this whole system it, I'm, I'm I just I'm so proud of this whole fairy dust collection and it brings me so much joy to see what everyone does with the art supplies I create one of the really lovely things about painting with the fairy dust pigments is the shimmer doesn't turn up as you're painting with them. It's something you have to wait for. It's a tantalizing anticipation because once the paint is dry and you're turning the page or you've got the light shimmering on it, it just extends the magic from creating the paint, creating with the paint and then enjoying what you've created. Even the joy of filming the artwork, not the artwork itself, but the way that the colour sheens and gleans makes me happy. And so looking forward to seeing what you do with it because oh, just seeing people's art that they make from the art supplies that I create is just brings such a joy to me. It's a marvellous experience. Singing a song along the way